Alright guys, so we're tearing down the Equinox to see what is up with this chain and the camshafts. So this is what's up. That's not good. You can see why the timing jumped. So I'm going to bar the engine over. We're going to line up our marks and see how far off this intake cam actually is. Alright, so here is how the timing chain is supposed to sit on these sprockets. See, there's the crank. There should be a little arrow on there. We don't have the crank pulley off yet, but let's assume for now that the exhaust camshaft is still in time because uh, we didn't have any trouble codes for that. Now, if we count the links from exhaust arrow to intake arrow, we should have exactly 15 links. So let's count them. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15. All right. Now, let's go to the vehicle and see if we can count these links. So there's the arrow on our exhaust. So let's start counting. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, and you can see the arrow is right there at 13 and a half it looks like. So it should be 14, 15. It should be on this link right here, and if we count sprocket teeth, it is 1, 2, three teeth off okay now I did a little bit of research and this sprocket has 46 teeth okay so if we're three teeth off how many degrees crankshaft rotation is that I'll give you a second to think about it and I'll show you on the calculator All right, we've got our handy Casio calculator here. So, these camshafts rotate once for two crankshaft rotations, so 720 degrees of the crank. So now, we, if we divide 720 divided by 46 teeth, we have 15.6 degrees crankshaft for one tooth on these camshaft sprockets. So all we need to do is multiply this by 3 and we are about 47 degrees 47 degrees retarded on our intake camshaft which is exactly what we deduced from our pressure transducer waveform. Now that known good uh, <clears throat> cam crank correlation that Keith sent me I think that might be for a different uh, year engine. This is a 2010. I think he sent me one for a 2011. And we know that manufacturers, they always change these little details between years. So the pressure transducer waveform was spot on. We could see that the intake valve opening was delayed. And, you know, I guess around 50 or 60 degrees. We, we see here it's 47 degrees. So that's, that's fantastic. Um, it kind of proves the point that you can use your pressure transducer to even verify timing. So now it's uh, up to us here to we're going to install a new timing chain, a new uh, advanced mechanism on the intake cam since uh, that wasn't you know responding at all to our bidirectional controls at 180,000 miles and it was you know in the wrong position to begin with so we're going to change this guy out, change the chain change the tensioner which you know based on how sloppy our cam chain is that needs to be changed and also obviously the uh, timing cover gasket so I might uh, shoot a couple clips during the procedure but otherwise that was it for the diagnosis and I'll turn the camera back on when we get this thing fired up and take a couple known good cam crank waveforms alright we've got the old chain out process went a little quicker than I expected. Here's the new one. It says made in France. So OEM, you know, AC Delco part right from the dealer, genuine GM. No aftermarket dormant stuff. <laughs> this is a critical engine component. So let's lay this guy out 
And I'll set you guys up on a tripod. How about that? Alright. We should have our colored links. So I just want to compare the two chains, see how much the old one stretched. At 180,000 miles, you definitely expect some chain stretch. Let's line them up. Let's see here. There we go. So there's the difference. So you multiply, you know, eighth of an inch by two, about quarter inch chain stretch. So my guess is it's still serviceable, but if we're going this far, we're putting a new chain on here. So uh, it'll be problem free for a long time. So we're going to pop this on, time it, and uh, cross our fingers. So at our crank, we have this purple link, and it should line up with that dot on the uh, crank sprocket. And then up here, we have the blue and the purple marker, and those will line up with the arrows on our actuators. So we're going to pop those on, get our timing chain guide back in there, and uh, everything should line up. Alright, so here's the progress purple link is still lined up with our dot on the crank. Our blue mark is lined up with the arrow on the new intake actuator. And our purple link is lined up with the arrow on our exhaust. So all we need to do now is get the tensioner in from the back side to uh, take up this chain slack. Right now all the slack is you know, on the tensioner side. And then torque these cam bolts down to spec. And these are new. I got new torque to yield bolts as per GM factory instructions. And uh, should be in pretty good shape. So now we're going to torque down the camshaft actuator bolts. And I don't know, I think we can do without this special tool. So 22 foot pounds plus 100 degrees and we're using Jim's digital torque wrench something that I don't have so we'll use it <laughs> 22 foot pounds let's uh, set the camera up here alright so here's 22 foot pounds it's gonna beep at me right? just don't jerk oh it's orange okay we'll keep going here and that's fantastic. Oh, it even buzzes. Let's do the same with the, uh, the other guy here. Good deal. And now we need to go 100, 100 degrees, right? Lay it down. Okay. You know, hold that. You can set it. I'm gonna set it and forget it, right? It's been some since I've done it. Huh? Okay. Angle zero. Torque zeroing. Angle zeroing. There's 90 degrees, right? Very nice. So up to 100. Okay. And now we're good to go, right? Mm -hmm. Are you sure you don't want me to put a paint marker on there just to verify? Well, I'll go by that, by that M. So this should rotate down to 
a little test. All right, here we go. It's going. So we're 37 degrees so far. That's it. Fantastic. Now, should I reset it? Oh, you're not on record, are you? Oh, we'll do. That. No, we're recording. Oh, yeah, we're good. Yeah. So, should I? Which button should I hit here? Just none. Just go right to the just, next one. Just right to the next one. There we go. Is the number in the in the screen there? This will be a commercial for Snap-on's Torque Wrench, right? <laughs> and we're there. Cool. Those are torqued down. I think we'll just need to unlock our tensioner and put in the chain guide. It should be all set. So this uh, timing chain tensioner is kind of fancy. Um, right now it's in the locked position, you know, as it came from the box, and it says the timing chain tensioner is released by compressing it two millimeters, which will release the locking mechanism in the ratchet. To release the timing chain tensioner, use a, a suitable tool with a rubber tip on the end. Feed the tool down through the cam drive chest to rest on the cam chain, then give it a sharp jolt diagonally downwards to release the tensioner. So let's see if we can come up with a suitable tool to uh, do that procedure. So we have a wooden handle on the cam chain. We're going to give it a smack and hopefully something happens. I think, I think that was it. Is that it? Let me double check the uh, Yep, chain is tight. <laughs> so, so it took. Yep, so you can see the tensioner if you look through here. Right there, okay. You can pull up on this, and the tensioner is spring loaded. So we unlocked it, we're in good shape. We gotta put this chain guide back on. And uh, yeah, just button it up, button it back up. And then we'll get some known good waveforms off of this thing. So I'm trying to shove the new gasket up on the timing cover and it just doesn't fit. I mean, it seems to be identical to the old one. But there's one piece that's different. See that little cross member? Boop! Not there. It looks like they just cut it with some cutters. That's what I'm going to do. Right about there, and right about here, done. Now it should fit. Alright guys, the Equinox is back together. We've got the Pico set up, we have not started it yet, so I'm, you know, <laughs> Cross your fingers. Uh, the Pico is set up like before. The blue channel is on the intake camshaft sensor. The red is on the exhaust. The green is on the cam or the crankshaft. And the yellow channel we have on our intake solenoid actuator. So when we run the bidirectional test, we'll see how this command, you know, correlates to our shift in our camshaft. And if you notice, I actually have both wires back probed, the yellow and the black for this channel. And that's because the Pico has isolated grounds. So the other three grounds we have stacked, you know, on a metal stud. Those are connected to, you know, body ground. But this one, since both the positive side and the ground are 
controlled by the ECM, we want to see the voltage across the solenoid. That's what really matters. That's what turns it on. So that's why we have that channel connected separately. But our scope is running, and Jim is ready to fire it up, so go for it. Nice. Spacebar not working. So let's uh, make sure we don't have any codes. Sounds better already, right? Actually cranked up nicely, <laughs> like we expected. Let's see, engine, codes menu, display codes. No codes, alright, and it's running. So. We can actually do our functional test now with the camshaft actuators. So CMP actuator tests. Exhaust intake, so we'll do intake. Finish. Raise the idle and let us in. Let's look at our data. Good. Yep, so there's our intake and desired or uh, actual and desired. There's our exhaust. So we're at four degrees on the exhaust and one degree on the on the cam. So I'm gonna do a new capture on the Pico and Jim's gonna dial up our degrees there. We'll see, we should be able to see the shift. So let me, let me save the, uh, yep. This is a known good at idle. This is after repair. At idle. Save. After repair. Idle. Go ahead and dial it up to, I don't know, whatever, 40, as high as it'll go. 25 as high as it'll go, right? That's 25? Yeah. Okay. So look at that. A desired intake is perfect. And our command percent should be a 40, 40 percent, right? Yeah. So you can dial it back down. Oh, I just hit the, the minus. So test again. And now just dial it back to zero. Oh, okay, so you got kicked out. Hey, continue. So it should be back. I think we'll go back into the. Hey, it won't do it without a change. I have to shut it off. That's all right. So, so go back. Let's just look at our data. Keep going back. One more. Yep, data. And CMP actuator data. Yep. Now we should see. Yep. So that's interesting. The uh, percent command, I guess, changes a little bit, and then once it moves, it'll yeah. go back to forty percent. So that's that's cool. So we'll stop that. Yeah. Okay, I, I don't know if my buffer. Uh, Collected that. Let's let's try the bidirectional test one more time. See if it'll let us in. I have to shut it off and start it back up. Let's let's just try it. Let's see. Functional tests, actuator tests, actuators, intake, continue. There it goes. So test. We go plus. It, yeah, it seems happy. Back to zero. Five. Return. And we'll pause that. We'll save that capture and analyze some data, but looks like it's running great. Alright guys, so 
Here is the known good waveform. We set up our cursors at 720. And now if we zoom in here, No, I think my, uh, you know, it's a little wavy because the, the ground might have been close to an ignition coil, but that doesn't really matter to us. Let's uh, pull in our cursors. So we want before and after. How many degrees did this camshaft um, shift after the repair? So before, if you remember, our, well, we can even look it up because I don't quite remember what it looked like before. <clears throat> I might have to get a cleaner waveform because if I share this some people will make fun of me. Oh your ground is bad. But it's okay the car runs great now so we can get as many waveforms as we want. And Should, should I tell them the, the actual labor time? Let's see when, when did we start on this? Like closer to three and now it's we wrapped it up around five, so book time is what, like six, seven hours almost, and, and hours. We, we polished it off in under three for sure. I'm pretty pleased with that. So let's and no special dealer tools, <laughs> just a crescent wrench and a, oh, we did use Jim's fancy torque wrench. I think that's cut down on the on the labor time a little bit. I would have been there with a paint marker and counting my degrees and stuff. But why work hard when you have the tools? Let's see. Let's open up our old. So I think it was this one right here. See, that's a, that's a clean waveform. So, our, we're looking at that hump right there. So, uh, we don't really need to set up our cursors here. We just want to see where that transition is. So that transition was on one, two, on the rising edge of the third hump in our crank, crankshaft signal. So let's go back to our other window, the wavy one. And here, so the rising edge of the third window, one, two, so right there, that's where our intake used to be, so it was retarded. And here is where it is now. So this is the magic number right there. And what is our, how far did we shift? 55 degrees. Okay, now by our calculation, if it was just three teeth off, it would have been what 46 I think we 46 46 but, but exactly right I was gonna ask the viewers Jim that's supposed to be a critical thinking question why are we an extra Sorry about why are we an extra nine degrees <laughs> advanced now yes exactly right because our chain is new and it's tighter so obviously we're, we're even a little a uh, little more advanced so that is beautiful I like that and we can, uh, so that's confirmed. Confirmed fix. Should really take a, that waveform looks really crappy. But let's go to, let's see. Here's where we bi directionally controlled it. So I think on, on this page it should be, we advance, what, we advance it like 20 degrees, I think? 25 total. 25 total. And we started at, uh, let's go back to our first page. Where are, where are the cursors? Right here. So 
So again, we can, uh, let's see, there we go. So we started at, intake was 28 degrees crankshaft before the sink notch. So I'm guessing that's whatever default is. I think it's zero or might be five degrees. So remember, remember 28. And if we go fast forward to, let's see, frame two, three, that's, that's where it's zero degrees. So actually, we can do this. We know this is zero. So if our zero is from here, so we're using the crankshaft sink notch as our reference. So when we're, when we're commanded zero, it's 14 degrees crank. Okay, and when we were I went all the way up to 25 on the scanner and that should have been somewhere in this frame. Zoom in here. Um, so like right here. So let's do the same measurement. Now this is this is all just fun and games. You know the car is fixed but why not confirm. So let's see. There it's showing 20 degrees. Um, it's, hard to pick it, it's hard to pick exactly where we advanced it. Um, let's see here. So that's definitely zero. Ah, oh, now I messed up my cursors. Oops. So we can actually check how many humps we are away. So like one, two, three, four and a half. And it's a 60 degree, uh, 60 tooth crankshaft um, pattern. So every tooth is six degrees, right? Since, you know, 360 and one <clears throat> between two sink notches. So I just wanted to find a spot where we were actually advanced. Okay, I think I think right there. That's that would be a good good place to look. See how many teeth advanced we are there. So let me reset our cursors. So again, from there to there, we're 720. Now the white cursors. We want to go from here to out here. Doing that right? Oh, I'm sorry. Wrong hump. From here, zoom in to here. So about it's a showing 50 degrees minus what was it 15? So 35 degrees advanced. Um, well, it definitely moved, <laughs> and the computer was happy with it. You know, it showed 25, but, um, you know, basically, car's fixed. We're going to take it for a test drive. We're going to change the oil and ship it. So, really glad that we could confirm, you know, do the repair, confirm the fix, and uh, nothing was bent. <laughs> so, this is a pretty, uh, um, you know, best case scenario for the customer. Alright guys, I appreciate you watching. Uh, thanks to Jim here for uh, inviting me over. And I'll see you in the next one. Bye bye. Oil change is done. We're going to take this Equinox for a spin. See how much power it should have. Where's the beeping at? Who wants me to put on the seatbelt, huh? Yeah.
direct injection technology. That's a A little more pep than this. They're supposed to get like what 30 miles to the gallon or something? Something that yeah, I read online that some people weren't happy with the mileage. It wasn't what GM advertised. Well it certainly drives better than when it came in, so it'll stay that way for a while. Someone short drives this thing and can't see the mirrors. All right, so that was verification of repair. Always test drive your vehicle after uh, doing a, anything, you know, big. <laughs> but uh, I'll post this up, and I hope you guys enjoy it. See you, see you next time. Bye-bye.